Hello, shirt bearers. Whatever happened to achievement hunting? You know, those things that pop up in the right hand corner of your screen when you do something you didn't even mean to and apparently doing a 360 going prone, throwing a grenade at your feet and then shooting a guy in the right pinky finger is an achievement that you can get. That's also obtained by 40% of other players in the game. Yeah, that thing, that's what we're talking about. When I was in middle school, Rooster Teeth was at the top of their game. They were my go-to YouTube channel to watch when I was trying to 100% a game on Xbox 360. They were the first podcast I ever listened to. They did some other stuff, I think, and Michael screamed at a screen because loud was funny. Yes, 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 no, mother. They owned a channel called Achievement Hunter that specialized in playing games in ways that weren't meant to be played, as well as just straight up achievement guides. These guys defined my life and personality for a good couple of years, but honestly it's been a while since I watched them. I wonder how Rooster Teeth is doing today. God damn. I don't think I need to explain what an achievement in a video game is, we've all gotten at least one. Getting them casually without trying or caring is one thing, but when you actively seek to try to achieve one, they can actually be a really fun challenge. The best achievements are the ones that change the way you play a game, like doing lasso and halo, playing a level with only one type of weapon, and even MW2 the second has some really fun ones. Not only were you playing the game in a different and unique way that you would have never done so otherwise, but now you also get the little serotonin boost from hearing the achievement ding. Getting achievements in games was just fun back then because it felt like people actually cared. At least in my friend group they did. Especially when Achievement Hunter was popular, Xbox had the system of gamer score that gives each achievement in any game a value, which most of the time did seem arbitrary, but I think the idea was that the more gamer score an achievement gave you, the harder it was to get it. I used to compare gamer score with all of my friends, and when one started to get more than me, it was pretty fun to try and surpass them. I'd dig through my box of old games in the corner of my room and see which one I could squeeze the most gamer score out of. I eventually racked up so much gamer score that my developing brain started having its actual first critical thought, which was, what can I even do with gamer score? I mean, it's fun to look at, but when more and more games keep coming out, I think its value becomes lessened. Yes, I'm implying that there's gamer score flation. Now, that doesn't really answer the question though. What do I do with my gamer score? Well, there actually was a program made by Microsoft that rewarded players for having high amounts of this gamer score. Now, this is a source trust me bro situation because I cannot for the life of me find the site that I used to use, not even in the Wayback Machine for this Xbox Rewards program. Okay, side note, while I was recording uh, the Wayback Machine footage, um, I noticed that the page wasn't loading, as you can kind of see here. Uh, turns out it was hacked six hours ago. Um, six hours ago this article came out, so um, no footage on that. At the time though, there was a limited time event where apparently they were giving away controllers for people with I think over 20,000 gamer score. I don't know how it really worked, but you could get access to the rewards just by having a certain amount of gamer score. And even if you did have to buy these controllers and my memory isn't serving me right, it was still a cool exclusive piece for enthusiasts and would have been a really cool story, but for some reason, I just can never get it to work. I think my mistake was that I put my actual birthday on my Xbox account for some reason, um, so I never got my silver controller. But here, look, it, I, it wasn't a fever dream because they're selling them here on eBay. Xbox does have this system kind of still, but I couldn't be bothered to learn how to use it. So what about Steam? There's probably a couple hundred thousand achievements on Steam. I myself have gotten 3,800 achievements on my 12 year old Steam account. The best thing these achievements are for is your Steam profile. You can display your rarest achievements or display certain ones along with your achievement count. See, I made this guy like run around and break this door and hit this guy. 
isn't isn't that cool? Well, it was when I did it five years ago, but uh, nobody has ever complimented it or said anything about it since. So uh, yeah, I think think Steam achievements are pretty much useless. So what is the value in getting achievements now? Well, absolutely nothing, unless you are a YouTuber. See, one thing I've been eyeballing as a YouTuber myself is these 100% slash platinum trophy videos. This has always interested me. Playing games for the purpose of getting achievements could be a very fun video, but can I see myself making a video for months and months about getting every achievement in a game? Yes. But as a small YouTuber, you bet your ass I'm not going to be gambling months of my time on a single video. I'd rather do a few ones based just on harder achievements. So if this is something that kind of interests you guys and it's framed in the correct way, I wouldn't mind getting to do some of the hardest or least gotten achievements in various games. So let me know if you would be interested in something like that. Now, one game that actually makes achievements insanely good is Payday 2. I love this system so, so much. I really wish other games did it, but basically getting certain achievements will unlock actual in-game items, giving you so much incentive for getting some achievements because you can just get really, really cool masks and cosmetics. I know TF2 did this as well for Poker Night at the Inventory, but if you told me you didn't use Steam Achievement Manager, which I totally didn't use, to get your hands on those items, then you would be lying. Not me, of course, you. Beyond these rare examples though, I really do wish achievements had more of a value, especially on Steam. I think we could all benefit from tying in Steam points into achievements for certain verified games or something like that, but uh, you could also just make YouTube videos on them, I guess. Anyways, that's all I got. Uh, subscribe or I'll comment mean things on your Steam profile. Bye.